Hey y'all, Caleb here. Uh, so in today's video, um, I want to walk through um, sharing settings or configuration uh, between uh, two or more uh, Visual Studio projects. So uh, Visual Studio has a lot of different ways that you can uh, manage uh, configuration, um, tweak your configuration um, locally. Um, when you install a new web app, you're going to have uh, an app settings file. And that app settings is, uh, is JSON based. Um, and as you can see, you can have multiple levels. Uh, the, the Visual Studio uh, program uses uh, a lot of this when you're, when you're working with your applications, you're building things out. You can, of course, add to it uh, as needed. And um, there are a number of different ways to, to pull that configuration into your application. Uh, and there's also a number of ways of storing them without having them as plain text here, especially if it's uh, tokens or something that needs to be more secure. Uh, right? You have user secrets locally and you have Key Vault um, in Azure, as well as if you're using an app service. Uh, you can manage your, your configs up there based on whether it's uh, your staging or production site. Um, there's a number of things we can dig into uh, that I um, believe I'm going to be doing in future videos. But for today, I just want to, to dive into um, sharing configuration between more than one project. Uh, and you, you won't necessarily run into this, right, unless you're, you're working in a, in a larger project or, or maybe an enterprise setting. Uh, but what, what can happen sometimes is that you have app settings, whether it's um, Azure keys or uh, tenant information, um, any, anything really, uh, that's being used by more than one application. Uh, you don't want to have to duplicate this in multiple places, because if you update it in one, it won't update in the others, and you could forget, and you know, that causes all kinds of problems. Uh, you don't want to have to copy and paste. Um, between one and the other, uh, or make sure that they get copied or pasted into your publish output. Right? There's, uh, there's a number of problems you can run into or issues you can have if you're having to manage the same information in multiple files, right? Uh, this goes back to dry, don't repeat yourself. So uh, one way of doing this, um, and there are a number of ways. Uh, Andrew Locke actually has a really good blog post on how he handled it, and, and I'll link that in the description. But uh, what I'm doing um, is I've created a new uh, configuration file called Shared Settings. Um, and as you can see, inside the actual base file, there's nothing because uh, all of our um, configuration is specific to the environment you're working in. Uh, now, uh, like I mentioned, there's a ton of different ways to, to manage your config. You can, you can uh, strongly type it using a clash. You can put it into a service that you uh, pull in in your startup, and, and you have a bunch of ways that you can manage that. I'm just doing the super simple way here um, because that's not really the focus of this video. But you'll see that... Um, at the top, I'm using uh, Microsoft's configuration extension, and then I'm injecting the iConfiguration, which allows me to access uh, sections uh, of our application JSON files or our configuration. So you'll see here, configuration gets section application configuration name, and that ties to application configuration name right here, which is first app uh, for... Um, for our first app. Um, the second item is the same exact thing, uh, but we're pulling from shared configuration and name. And you'll see that in app settings and app settings development, there is no shared configuration. Um, that shared configuration lives in uh, these configuration files. And for instance, for development, it's shared configuration, name, sharing is carrying, right? So if we we run uh, our our what we're calling our first app. You'll see that uh, we have welcome to first app, and then we have sharing is carrying. So we've got both 
uh, pieces of configuration being pulled into the application, which is exactly what we want. Um, but then, right, you have to factor in your second app. And that's the whole reason we did the shared settings.json. So if you create a, a separate, separate uh, application, in which for ours is, it's called a second app, I know, real simple. Um, one of the things that you're going to do here is um, you're going to have your own app settings, right? So for, for instance, for this, um, the name is second app. Um, and you see we have the shared settings, but it doesn't look quite the same, right? And they're slightly different. And the reason is this is a linked file um, instead of an actual copy of it, uh, of the existing file. And how you go and do that is you go to add existing item and you go to the file that you want to duplicate. And in our case, we're gonna, we're gonna copy the parent uh, because the way the configuration files um, are set up is that, that you can stack uh, development, production, staging, so on and so forth under the parent. So we're just gonna select the parent and instead of clicking add, you click this arrow and you click add as link. And what that will do is it will add it, but you'll have this little blue icon at the bottom. Um, it will also, if we go look at our project file, you'll see that it's created an item group and it's including um, all of the settings JSON from the first app folder. So the main, the development, staging, and production. Um, when you come in to this after adding them, uh, you won't have that that always identifier on there. Uh, well, let's go look at the properties. So we're going to look at properties, and you'll see over here that uh, I have copy to output directory set as copy always. By default, it's going to be do not copy, right? Um, the reason why we want it to be copy always is because it doesn't exist in the second app. We want to make sure that that when we um, uh, build uh, or publish that the files get, get duplicated in that published directory, right? They're not duplicated in our solution, but they will be duplicated in the output. Uh, so we want to make sure that you do that for, for all of your shared settings, which I have. Um, and so the next, next two things that you're going to, to need to take into account, and I actually skipped over this for the first app is um, by default, uh, your, your um, C-sharp web apps, your .NET Core apps are going to, to have a reference to app settings, right? They're gonna know that it exists, but they don't know that shared settings exists. And uh, one of the ways that you can, can make sure that that gets added is that you add this configure app configuration um, to your host builder. Uh, now, when you when you uh, come in here for the first time, that's probably what you're going to see, right? All I've done is I've added this, so we're just extending the uh, the builder. Um, you're going to be passing in your hosting context, uh, which is actually going to be um, hanging off of this. You're going to have you're going to have that context and your config into this into this Lambda. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna add a JSON file to, to your configuration, right? Um, and as you can see, I'm adding shared settings and I'm passing in the hosting context, hosting environment, environment name.json. Um, you can have multiple environment names. You can have whatever environment names you want. Um, by default, uh, um, .NET has development, staging, and production, right? And you can also, uh, real quick, I'll show you. You can see um, where, here we go. Under debug, you can see the ASP.NET Core environment that it's looking for. And it starts out as development. When you move from one environment to the other, you would actually change this environment or this value in that environment. Uh, because we're working in development, we're going to leave it alone. But what it does is it then goes and looks for that file.development.json, right? Um, and uh, the nice thing about this is you can, you can do this multiple times, right? You could have multiple JSON files 
um, that extend your app settings, or that even in some cases, um, you can overwrite configuration and app settings as long as you're using the exact same structure um, and, and naming scheme. Uh, so that's how we got the shared settings to work in, in the first application. The second application is a little more involved, not significantly so, but just a little bit more. So um, one of the things I want to show you is if we if we remove this real quick, um, right? We're doing the same thing in first app or in second app that we did in first app, right? Passing in the hosting context and config and adding a JSON file. But if we try to run this now, it's going to fail. Because it is expecting to find that configuration file and it doesn't exist in the second app development environment, right? Because it is a linked file. Now, um, one way that you can get around that is you can actually tell it that the, uh, the file is optional. You'll see you have your path and then a Boolean of option. You can tell it that it's optional and it won't blow up, but you also won't have that file uh, to access, right? Um, which is why for development purposes, um, I'm actually checking the hosting environment. Um, and like I said, by default, uh, Windows or .NET provides you three. Is development, is production, is staging. You can also add your own, right? So in this case, um, it is development. If it is development, I'm basically adding the file directly from the first app, right? Which is not what you want to do um, outside of your development environment because uh, this first app is not necessarily going to exist, right? When you when you package um, your application up and publish it, it's not going to look like um, your development environment, right? The compile version is going to be different. So in order to get this to, to use the same shared settings in development, we're pointing to the location of the file in the first app. And you'll see, we now have welcome to second app and sharing is caring. And if you remember in the first app, it said welcome to first app share is, sharing is caring. So they are both sharing the, the same shared settings file, right? Which you're like, no, Caleb, not really because you're just pointing to first app. Uh, let me prove it to you. Um, so, right. This only happens if we're in development. Otherwise, we're going to be using um, the shared settings file that is actually copied uh, to your output directory, which is why we're doing the copy uh, always, right? So, uh, so just to prove it to you, let's go in the second app, and uh, you can create a published profile, and right, you can point to Azure, all kinds of different places. For us, we're just doing it. Uh, in the folder here. So it's going to be a bin release netcore 3.1 publish, right? And this is the release version of it, which means it's going to be our production version. Okay. So we clicked publish and um, we can now go into that folder uh, and we can actually run the DLL in that folder. Um, and let's go take a, a, a quick look, right? So um, this is second app bin release dot net core uh, at 3.1. If you go into publish, uh, you'll see that we have our, our shared settings files because they're, they're being copied in. Um, we have our app settings, we have our app DLL, and then we have our www root, which is, which is, you know, the, the hosting for the application. So what we're going to run is we're going to run this DLL file. So uh, to do this, you would do .NET run second app.dll. Um, whenever I'm doing F5 uh, from inside of uh, the Visual Studio application, it's doing a .NET run. It's basically running in, in a console. Um, but we're going to do, uh, because this has been published, it's compiled, we're going to do second app.dll. And it's going to, to run similar to... Um, to how it did in development, but you're going to see that it is now using um, the sharing is carrying file that was actually copied from 
first app into second app. And, and I put the prod on there just to make sure you can, you know, the difference, right? So this is pulling from our production app settings and our production shared settings. So let's, uh, we can, we can stop that and let's go back here. And I just want to look at, um, these real quick so you can see, right? Our shared configuration is production, sharing is caring. And I clicked on it in the second app, but it's still got that link. So it's actually coming from here, right? Um, and then you have our app settings production, which as you saw is, is prod second app. Now with, um, with your managing your configuration settings, there could be a bunch of gotchas. Um, uh, some small things could end up wasting a good bit of time. Um, one of those things is using IS Express. Uh, if you're doing this, do not use IS Express because, uh, right, it is it is sitting on top of IS or it's it's a managed version of IS and it can't handle the pathing uh, properly. So it can actually confuse uh, the, the root path to first app with the second app. And, um, I want to show you that real quick, uh, what I'm talking about here, and then we're going to, um, then we're going to wrap up. So you see, when we come into configure app configuration, we have our hosting context and inside that hosting context, we have, uh, the configuration, which is, uh, all the built-in providers. Um, we have, uh, our hosting environment which is where our content route comes from, if I can get it right. So you can see application name is second app and the content route path is second app. With IS Express, it doesn't necessarily handle this very well. Um, and it might actually use first app because of the way that it's, it's spinning up the ports in IS Express. Um, but then you also see you have our, your properties, um, which, it's interesting to dig into because this is um, what .NET is passing in to to help build up your your application to make sure that everything is um, is set up correctly uh, to go forward. And then you have your configuration, which is what we're going to be adding um, our shared settings JSON file to. So I think I think that about covers it. Um, if there's anything that I've missed, right. Or that you have questions on, uh, please leave a comment, um, and I'll make sure to respond. And, uh, hopefully this, this helped, helped you if you're, if you're running into a similar situation where, um, you don't want to duplicate effort and you don't, don't want to duplicate configuration, but you do want to share it between multiple projects. Um, I hope you'll have a great day and, uh, I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye, y'all.